Hello everybody, today we're going to be talking about finding data points given percentiles or top percents or below percents. In this video I'm actually not going to do any examples, I'm just going to show the concept of what's going on and then further I'll make further videos with many examples and this definitely has to be practice. This has to be practice. Okay, so before we start let's do a little review about what we used to do. Okay, so before I'd give you this data set. Okay, I'd give you this data set, and it was of everybody. And somewhere in the problem, it said it's normal, and the average of everybody from your population is this, your mean, and how much variance, how much standard deviation is going on is here. Okay, so we put the average in the middle and the standard deviation over here somewhere. Okay, so then what I'd do is I'd say, Okay, we'll find the probability that 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 an x will fall greater than this number over here. Okay, find not probability, find the percent. Find the percent that the x will fall somewhere to right of this x. Okay? So, remember all these data, this is the population. So, we generally call the population either x or y. So, all these are x's. All these are x's. And the first step to finding the percents, to find this percent, remember if the whole thing's one, then this area is definitely going to be less than one. Okay, the, the key to finding this percent is to find a z value. We have to find how many standard deviations this z, z value, this x value is from this mu. And what we call that, to do that, we call that standardizing. We want to standardize, standardize the x values. And what basically that, that means is it turns all the x's into z's. It turns all the x's into z's. And I leave this population distribution and I go to what's called the standard normal distribution. And the standard di normal distribution, think about it, what do you think the mean is? Okay, if z is how many standard deviations you're away from the mean, so how many standard deviations am I away at here? Well, that would be zero. Okay? and this would be one over here. Let me show you why this is one. Let's just say the average was 40 and this was 50 right here. That spot right there. That's 40 and that's 50. And the standard deviation was 10. Let's say the standard deviation is 10. How many standard deviations is that away? It's one. It's one standard deviation. It's one 10 away from 40. So that's why that's always one. Over here would be a negative one. Remember all these values are z values very important to know that if you're on the left side of zero it's a negative z. If you're on the right side of zero it's a positive z. That's very very important. Okay so to turn this x right here to find the percent I have to turn that x into a z. Standardize it. So this was the formula. This is a review. That's it. It's the absolute distance to, uh, relative to its standard deviation. Okay so now what I'm going to do is this z is actually that z right here, that z score. It's going to be positive because it's on the right. So I standardized it. And then we go to the chart and we find this. Or we use our calculator and we find this. And I showed you both ways to find that percent. So that's why I say it's an x, standardize it to a z, and find the percent. Okay, remember we could do this in between, I could do this less than, but that's the little review. What we're doing here is we're working backwards. We're going to start with the percentile. Notice the percentile is an area to the left. Or they'll say top percent or they'll say bottom percent. So we want to get be given a percent. We want to turn that percent and find the z-score that's associated with this percent. Or I should say percentile. Percentile. And then turn that into a, find the z associated with that percentile. And then once we have the z, it's pretty easy to find the x. I will say, out of both of them, the, the one we're doing now, students have a lot more trouble with. Okay, so let's separate this. This was the review. This is a review. If you're not sure how to do that, there are videos. Go back and check the videos. So now we're not starting with the population distribution. We're starting with the standard normal distribution. Okay, mean of zero, standard deviation is one. So this is the standard normal distribution. And what that means is I could say 
um, find the score that's associated with the top 20th percentile. It's top 20th percentile. So I'll do that. 20th percentile means that 20% falls to the to the left. So this here is 20%. Just write it in decimal form. That's 20%. So what we could do is we could use our chart with the 20th percentile and find this negative z score to find that z score. Okay? And since I have my chart over here, I'll just go, I'll just show you how to do that. Okay? So let me pull my chart over. So look at this is area to the left. Is the z going to be positive or negative? Since it's on the left side of zero, it will be negative. And now I'm looking in this chart and I'm looking for 20%. That's 0.2. Point two zero three three point two six one point two zero five. So I'm going to take this point one nine seven. That's pretty close. And what I do is I scan over here. So that's negative point eight five. Negative point one eight. Negative point eight five. So the z score associated with that would be negative point eight five. Okay. So that's how you do it that way. So now I went from there to there. Now I have to go from here to here. Now here, you notice this is my population my population distribution, which is made up of x's or y's, whatever you prefer. And this is the mean. This is the standard deviation over here. And this is the x score that I'm looking for. Okay? And the way we do that is there's two ways. There's a common sense way and then there's a formula way. I'll go ahead and do the formula way first. So you have this z that you found. You found this. So you know this. Equals, okay, in this case it's going to be a negative z. And then you have this x, which you're trying to find, minus the mu, which is given, divided by the standard deviation, which is also given. Okay? So the thing is, is how many variables do we know? One, how many variables do we have? One, two, three, four. How many do we know? One, two, three. So we know three. We just solve this. We solve this algebraically. So I'm going to, to get rid of this on the bottom, I'm going to multiply this on the top on both sides. I'm going to put it here instead of the left. Multiplication goes both ways. So then these two cancel out. I'm solving for this. So now I have negative z times theta equals x minus mu. Now what I want to do is add this mu on both sides. Okay, that cancels out. I'm going to flip the flip the equation around so my x is on the left side. So, let's see, add that. That should be a plus. Sorry, plus plus. Okay, so I'm going to switch this around. So that's x equals mu minus z times standard deviation. Now this makes sense because this data point that I'm trying to find is this many z's from the mu. So it's mu minus z times the standard deviation. If my data was on the right side, if, if I said the 99th percentile, then it would be mu plus z times the standard deviation. But either or, you could always use this formula to find this point. So basically it goes, I gave you this, you find this, and then you come back and find this by doing this formula. Okay, so I'm going to do many ex examples and show you the different variations that you'll, you'll be getting and you can expect to be getting. And this, when you master this, it's going to help you so much later in the chapter when we get into testing. Okay, thank you for watching and have a nice day.